What's up, Internet? I'm George Edward, and in today's video, we're going to be showing you how to take advantage of magnets. I mean, not, not actually, but like, dude, <laughs> come on. All right. In all seriousness, what's up, Internet? In today's video, what I'm going to be doing is going over how I edit my photos to look like film uh, and more specifically Fuji Pro 400H. So this was a video I made a while ago, but it was when I was just starting out on the channel, filmed on my iPhone, iPhone quality audio, iPhone quality video. And in my honest opinion, it just takes a little too long to get through the meat and potatoes of the video. So this is supposed to be a better sounding, better looking, quicker, more concise uh, answer to that question, which is how to edit your photos to look like Fuji Pro 400H. So here we have our picture and there's no edits on it, right? And so what we wanna do is make this look like the picture in the thumbnail. So what I do when I first get into Lightroom, first and foremost, is look at the basic and I'll do a crop. Um, I know some people wait to crop, but I know that if this is going on Instagram, until that changes, right, I'm gonna do four by five. This is essentially what I'm looking for. Four by four, four by five aspect ratio, cropped in, and right here I'm just checking out this building because I don't wanna be too close to it, so I just wanna give it some breathing room. And there we have it. That's the basic crop. Now, one of the things I like to do just to test out the dynamic range of my photos, see how they look, is actually work with this Kyle McDougall neutral profile. And now this is my workflow, yes, but this thing is great for me. I, I throw this on a lot of my warmer photos and it tends to put it in a direction, softens it in a way that I really like. So I'll have his video linked on, on this one and I'll also uh, link the profiles themselves. And for there, I, I just like to kind of take a look at it. I'll typically mess with the auto just to see how that looks. And for my purposes here, I think it's a little too warm and a little too green. So I'm just gonna add some, adjust the tint and add some coolness. So that's kind of like the baseline edits. I don't touch anything from there. And then what I really wanna do is mess with the um, blue primary down here. So this was a trend on YouTube. I saw a hundred videos or so on why this is so important. And I did really like it. I like what it does to my overall color lift. So what I do in the beginning is really just adjust the blue primary here just to give it some added oomph, boost the colors, boost the oranges, right? And really just get a better look at everything that's going on in here. So if we do a quick compare, we could already see that this photo is heading in a much softer direction. Uh, the colors are a little bit more muted, all the while maintaining their, their pop. So now once I've done these few things, what I do is go back to basic here. And this is where I check a few more things, see if I if I have this image in a spot where I like it, and I'll start to mess with the sliders here. So one of the things I used to do all the time was just blow out the highlights or completely to reduce the highlights and reduce the shadows. What I will do is drop these completely. And since we have so much dynamic range on the Fuji sensor, the 50R medium format sensor, what I'm able to do is actually flatten this in a way that I think looks really good. And I'll lift this like a smidge just so it has a little bit more brightness, but I'm not gonna go too much further beyond that. And then for the shadows, similarly here, I'm just gonna blast these up. And again, I'm really looking in these muddy areas to make sure I can flatten it. And so if 90 is way too much. And yeah, what we're gonna do is get into an area that looks like this. So again, really going towards muted tones here. Uh, Fuji has more of that teal uh, and orange look. Um, but just way softer than any digital photo can really process. I mean, this is really contrasty right off the bat, and I, I just don't like a lot of contrast in my images. The present sliders really help when you're looking to actually adjust some of the uh, overall sharpness of your image. So when I do video, I boost contrast and I boost uh, sharpness, but on my photos, I actually do the opposite. So I like to add a little bit of haziness, add a little bit of texture here as well. It just mutes it down a little bit, and again, just adds a little bit of uh, softness around all of the harsh edges. And then from here, really, I'll kind of mess with saturation. Again, I don't want to go too far and mess with vibrance, because since we did flatten everything a lot, what I want to do is kind of pull some of that back out. Again, entirely subjective, but this is the way I like to go through it. And so that kind of sums it up for the basic corrections. Next up, we have the tone curves. So as you know, you have your shadows here, right? Shadow and brightness. We're not really going to mess with that. And then we have the individual color curves. So I don't really do too much here at all. Uh, what I'll do is usually grab these points here to build a bit of an S curve. And I just drop this down a smidgen and raise it a smidgen. 
And so by doing this, really what I'm allowing myself to do is just take advantage of more of the oranges in the scene. The two primary colors in here are obviously blue and orange, so we want to make sure that we're really isolating them. So when we're looking in these areas, right, everything is starting to take on more of a monochromatic look. And that's it for tone curves. I know some people really like the tone curves. I think if you mess with this one, you could get really punchy images. But for me and my style, really what I like is just more of a soft image, so I don't mess with the curves too much. One of my favorite parts about the actual color correction process is uh, the HSL sliders. And so this is where I'll start to play with the primary colors that are present in the image. So first and foremost, we have our reds, right? And we can see that that's kind of hidden in the shadows of the roller coaster here, if we were to mess with these. And so what I wanna do is again, work closer towards that orange a little bit. So really making this kind of look and feel like one solid color. And then the only thing I really ever do when I'm messing with these, again, we've already pu pushed the saturation on the on the calibration slider, but I like my blues to be a little bit more teal. So I'm just gonna push this down here uh, and get that teal look that I'm looking for. If you notice on a lot of my images, my iPhone wallpapers, all of them have this teal uh, in the skies and it's typically a clear sky. Some of my favorite photo conditions. So here what we're gonna do is actually just drop down that red a little bit, mute this out a little. Uh, and I actually kind of want my oranges, uh, and my yellows to have a little bit more pop. So again, this is really where we were. This is where we're headed. But what we need to do is take back some of this blue saturation. Again, we have a ton of saturation on the image already. So what I wanna do is just mute that out. So if I look at where it was, go to where it's going, we have a minus 15 on this. Just a small saturation kind of decline. It just takes it away from being the focal point of the image. We have a ton of negative space and I want it to be present, but I don't want it to be too poppy and, and really just kind of take away from the, the roller coaster here. And sometimes I'll come in and I'll mess with luminance, right? If I really wanted to, maybe add like a little bit here to give it some luminance. But overall, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. So I'm just gonna leave those be with the red adjusted a little bit. And so now we've done our basic correction, we've done our overall saturation, we've done the tone curves if needed, and we've done the HSL sliders. So next up, we have our detail, which I'm not gonna touch. Again, I don't want my images to be sharp, so I see no point in adding sharpness. Now we have our transform. I only really use this when I'm shooting architecture, but this is fine. This is from far enough away and all of the angles look good here. And then effects. Again, going forward more of that film simulation look, we're gonna to wanna to punch in some grain. And now what I do almost all of the time is pop up my amount of grain to around 25 to 30 and I drop this a little bit on the size and I drop the roughness a little bit. So again, now we have just that really, really soft grain in here, probably hard to see, because I don't want it to be too present. I don't want it to look destroyed. I just want it to have a little bit more character on the overall image. And at this point in the photo editing process, right, I am completely happy with this. So this allows me to get that baseline edit. This is perfect. Uh, I'm going to use this. I'm going to print this. Uh, I have printed it and I have posted this, right? It's an older image at this point, but it's still one of my favorites and still just has so much character to it. And that's it. That's genuinely it. That's how I work my way through my photo editing process. We have the basic corrections as well as the McDougal preset, which I think really just gives me a baseline and can get like a sense of what this image should be. I could isolate the few primary colors that I really wanna make pop in it. Again, I'm, I'm going for more of a simplistic photo approach. So we just really want the oranges and the teals present here. And that's gonna do majority of the speaking for this photograph. Uh, and then from there, we just go through the sliders, adjust the colors till we get a tone that we like uh, and really just play with them gradually. Uh, we have a lot of dynamic range present on this camera, so we want to flatten it as much as possible. Again, getting it closer to that Fuji look. We add the grain to an amount we're comfortable with, and then you could continue to distress the images more and more as you please, but here you are. So we've gone from this to this. So with that said, as always, I appreciate you watching. Hopefully this video is way more concise, gives you a better idea on how to do these edits on a much quicker time frame, um, and hopefully the audio is way better. Uh, so with that said, I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.